I was resisting, but something said go. So I went. So after daddy ministered, and in the course of ministration, he located me and spoke the first prophetic word into my life and discovered me that, listen, son, God has a lot of things for you, but come and I'll help you according to the will of God. And I am happy this afternoon to declare that that was the beginning of the opening of my book in the presence of God. Thereafter, anywhere I am, at any church meeting, unless a prophet doesn't come, they will call me and speak into my life. Unless I am not there. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I trying to say? I am saying that you may be a very important person. You may have so much grace and unction upon your life. But as long as you have not been located by a spiritual father, that will uncover you from where you were hiding and expose you onto the realms of divinity. There is nobody who will ever identify you and to tell you what God says about you. That is one of the reasons I do not joke with my father. That's one of the reasons. Ah, by the grace of God in my former church, I have preached the word of God. I had done several services in the, in the house of God. But never have I received grace than this year in my life. That is why I, I remember Papa preached it. Bible says that Jesus Christ was sent on earth for an assignment. He was God that manifested himself in the flesh. He came with power and authority and with the presence of God upon his life. But for 30 years of his life, he had never received a voice from God. Why? Because he was not discovered by a destiny prophet that will uncover him. So for 30 years, he did a couple of things. He did a miracle. His first miracle was that he changed water into wine. That was a miracle. He did a lot of things. But God never spoke unto the man. But the Bible says, as soon as he came unto a realization and said, listen, I know I am sent by God. I know the unction and the calling of God is upon my life. But my door ought to be opened by a master, by his master key. So he made a decision and decided to go to the prophet in town called John the Baptist. And as soon as he went and humbled himself and John baptized me, him, Bible says as he was walking out, then the heavens opened and the voice descended from heaven and said, now you have fulfilled what you must do because you have identified your father. Therefore, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. My friends, I have discovered that the blessing of a son is in the belly of his father. The blessing of a son is in the belly of his father. That is why the Bible says that honor your mother and your father so that your life will be prolonged on earth. So as long as you have not discovered your father and honor him as you must honor him, Get it, my brother. Hallelujah. That is just a simple testimony I wanted to share from my belly. Put your hands together once again for God. And I must say, the father, my papa and mama, they have been real men and people of God, raising champions to preach the gospel of Christ and manifest the grace of God upon their life. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. My king and my father, the one who calls those things as though they be not. The one who has ordained this time before the beginning of all creations. That in a day and on a time like this, he will gather your people 
from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And you will gather them under the feet of your unction and the power you have granted unto a man, a servant, that they will hear from you and their life will be imparted. So we commit this session into your hands, O oh God, that they visit us according to the might of your power. And may we never live here the same, but transformed by the renewal of our mind and by your grace that we will testify of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Daddy, I really, really salute your grace. I really appreciate it. Mama, ah, you are such a lovely mama. And I acknowledge the presence of my brethren, my senior brothers, Bishop, as Bishop, uh, as Bishop and many men of God. I thank God so much for this opportunity. This morning, I will just be sharing a few words with you. And uh, it is entitled, Understanding What a Son Must Do to Attract a Fatherhood Blessing. Understanding what a son must do to attract a fatherhood blessing. Otherwise, the fact is this, you can only go as far as your father can see if you are a son. Papa says, I pay so close attention to his words. He says that what a father can see sitting down, a son on a mountain cannot see as father as his father sees. Amen. Now, fathers give birth to children. God bless you. Fathers give birth to children. And uh, because of time, I'll just lay some foundation and we come up with a few words. Hallelujah. Let's understand some relationship between father, the purpose, sorry, sons, the purpose of a son, why they are sons, and what they must do so they can be able to attract the blessings of their father. Ladies and gentlemen, go with me to the book of Galatians, chapter number four. We'll read from verse one up to probably verse seven. Galatians chapter number 4. Now, if you are there, the Bible says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of him or of the father. Amen. Now I say that the heir, as long as he remains a child, is not different from a servant, though that heir is the Lord of all. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm speaking this afternoon is to understand what we should do to attract a blessing from our father. Now, the Bible makes it understand that now an heir is a successor. An heir, H E I R, is an inheritor of a property, of a legacy, of a lineage. So every king will have the successor given birth to. If your father is a man of God, then one of the sons is has the audacity or the right to inherit the father when he is not there whatsoever your father has you have the right to have it when your father gives you the permission that is who the bible refers to as the heir otherwise the heir is the future president the heir is the future king the heir is the next family herd the heir is the one that will sit in place of the father when he is no more. Am I making sense, ladies and gentlemen? Now the Bible says that despite this biological, legal right of an heir, as long as that heir is a child, he is not different from a servant in the house. Thank you, Lord. Father, help us understand the scripture. Now, what it means is this. For the mere fact that 
your father is the president of the Republic of Ghana is not an automatic guarantee that you'll also become unless you do something. The right of the heir is to inherit. Anytime a father gives birth to a son, it is to fulfill a specific purpose. So sonship is not just a natural event where you give birth, but sonship is a state of responsibility and an assignment for a specific purpose. Sonship is a state of responsibility. Anytime you give birth to a son, it's for a reason. Otherwise, you are not a son. Now the Bible says, in Isaiah chapter number 9, verse 6, Bible says that, for unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. And what is the function or the purpose of this son? For the government to be upon his shoulder. So the purpose for that son is not only to become a child, but to inherit governance from the father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And when you read Psalm 127, the verse 3 to about verse 5, the Bible first of all said that children are a heritage of the Lord. Amen. Oh, let me open that scripture and hear, read everything that is there. Psalm 127. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lo, from verse 3, Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. The verse 5 says, Happy is the man that has many of them. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. For they shall speak to the enemy at the gate. The purpose for sons is to defend what the father has. To protect the house. So the more children you have, the more sons you raise, you know that there is some level of security in your home. That is why within our normal society, any house that has well-built sons, everybody fears that house. They don't mess up with the house. Because you know that when you mess up, the sons will come and beat you. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm just trying to showcase or underscore is this. There is always a divine purpose or mandate for a son. Hallelujah. So the verse 1 of Galatians 1, Galatians 4 verse 1 says that, an heir, as long as he remaineth a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. So the mandate of the heir is to be a lord over the house. Is to be a lord, to be a master over every possession over in the kingdom. But your ability to rise up to the level of responsibility is dependent on your relationship with your father. Whether you want to become an heir to inherit your father's throne, to inherit the blessing of your father, is dependent on whether you are able to live as a son responsibly. Amen. But the Bible says that he must be under tutors and governor. You must go to training. Now let me jump and do something and then I can mention some few points. When you read the verses number 5 to 7. I'm still in Galatians chapter 4. Five biolo biological functions. But sons have Specific divine mandate. It is not every child that can inherit the father unless the one that has lived as a son. So the Bible gives an account in Genesis chapter 49. Bible says the old man Jacob was old and of or of an old age. And he sent a message to all his sons. Gather yourself together and I will tell you of the things that will befall you. So he has gathered all his sons. 
Now I am about dying. I have given birth to you as children. I have grace of God upon my life. I have a blessing in my belly to release. Which among you has lived up to a responsibility to receive my blessing as a father? So he started narrating the love history of all the sons. He said, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, the excellency of my strength and power, a man of dignity, but you are unstable as water. You are, are as unstable as water. Why? Because you have defiled the bed of your father. Wow. Everybody knows within any human organization that seniority is always the heir to the throne. But it is not so. Why? Be because. Hallelujah. And then he left Reuben. He went to Simeon and Levi. Your habitation has been full of cruelty, wickedness. Though you are my sons, but you have been so wicked to me. You have never looked after me. You have never given me food. You have never given unto me anything. Now I am about dying. I have to release the grace upon my life. I am sorry I will deny you. Why? You have been a child, but not a son to me. What must you do to attract the blessing of the father? So after he narrated all this, now he called his other son, Judah. He said, Judah, your name shall be called praise. And your brothers shall be your servants. Why Judah lived as a son? He knew what to do to attract the blessing of his father. My brethren, are you a son or you are a child? Your decision is yours. The Bible says in Malachi chapter number one verse six, it says that a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If I, Bishop Sam Osu, is your father, where is my honor? Where is my honor? So as you are gathered here as a son for this international sonship summit to receive of my impartation and grace that you will grow and prosper, which honor have you given unto me? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon, my few minutes is only to exhort us what must we do as sons to attract the blessings from a father. I mentioned a few things. I don't know whether I'm making sense to you, my brothers, my seniors, and my fellow men of God. You see, this is one of the problems I have in this life. Sometimes, the commonality of a word has devalued the importance of it. The commonality of a word or of something now devalues the purpose and the benefit thereof. As I'm preaching or speaking word of admonition, they say, oh, uh, how to utter, oh, said, we have, I'm a power of prayer. Even last two weeks, I preached it. I preached this, oh, how to be a blessing, blah, blah. You can preach this far better than I am. But the question is, uh, are you living to the purpose of the word you preach? Yeah. The Bible says, the kingdom of God is not in words, but it's in power. The power is the ability to live the word of God not to speak it. What must you do to attract the blessings of a father? One, you must be in constant communication with your father. It's a common thing. This one, what is the abre? You have, you have, you know this one. A lie. It is a common word, but check your account. Some is a Lord, search my heart. This morning, search your account. Communication is important 
for you to be in constant touch and receive the blessing of your father, you must always be in talk with him. Okay, let's prove it this way. Let, let me come from a far distance. All of you are men of God. No doubt about it. Because the grace of God has been ministered to you by the laying up of hands by the man of God. And probably God himself has spoken to you that have selected you. But your ability to remain a son to God is how frequent you speak with him. But not how frequent you carry his name around. That is why the other day, Jesus said, at that day, people will come. He said, Master, I have been Archbishop, Prophet, Apostle, General, and I have preached your word. I have raised the dead. But I said, ah, when? I do not know you. Why? Because you have never been in communication with your father. He said, there is not many people that call me master, master, master. Are my servants? They are my sons. No. The Bible says, as many of them as are led by the spirit of God, they are the children of God. The spirit of God means you are always in constant interaction with your father. The longer you don't forget it, my brother. In constant communication. The Bible says, it gave an account of Elijah and his son, Elisha. So as I see everybody here as an Elisha, everybody wants a double unction upon the hand or the life of our father. Everybody wants it. If you don't want the grace upon the man of God, lift up your hand and I will ask you to go home. <laughs> Amen. Everybody wants a double portion or even more. But there is a need for a responsibility. So the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. What does the scripture say ladies and gentlemen? The Bible says I'm supposed to be closing. Is that my time that is flying around? <laughs> Put your hands together for Jesus. Okay, I have probably about five minutes more. Amen. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared chariot of fire and horses of fire and plattered them both asunder. And Elijah went up by whirlwind into heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, the son Elijah desired the grace of God upon his father Elijah. Because he needed that blessing upon his life, the Bible says that he constantly walked with his father and talked with him. He walked with him and talked with him. How soon, how long do you talk with your father if you want his grace? As a son, what is the level of communication you have with your father? You have only become a ceremonial son. When at the gathering, ah, listen, in an event like this, anybody comes to. The Bible gives an account that now there came a time when the sons of God gathered. Sons of God. And the devil also came. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The devil also came. But for the fact that the devil came, did he make him the heir to the throne? <laughs> Communicate with your father. You can always come here once a while. Once every month. One of the first things that he told me, because when he located me, I was still committed to a different church. He said, my son, no problem. But just do once a month, come and pay me a visit. That's all. I paid a visit the first day, second, third day, and I became so addicted to his grace, I couldn't live any longer. <laughs> Walking with your father, talking with your father. My time is running out. I'm sure at another time, we have a lot of opportunity to share good words. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you're enjoying what God is saying. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now, the second thing you must do is a son must look up to his father in all things. 
a son must look up to his father in all things. Why? Your father is your future image. Whatsoever your father has become, you can also become. So Jesus said, looking up unto me, the altar and the finisher of my faith. Do you look up to your father? Do you look up to him? When things are good for you, do you remember him? When things are bad for you, do you remember him? How do you look up to your father? Look up to your father. It is in respecting this truth, when you are going through the valley, when you are going through the difficulty, you strengthen and encourage yourself because you know that your father has gone through far more than you have done. So the Bible says that we do not have a high priest who does not share in our infirmities. If you look up to your father, he would always give you the escape route to pass. But the more you disconnect yourself from your father, you want to do it by your own self. Son, there has never been anybody who has given birth to himself. So everybody must have a father. Ah, time. Daddy, God bless you for the opportunity. The third thing I want to share is sons must give physical things unto their father. Ah, do you call yourself a son? I'm sorry, I'm, I, I don't know, but I, you may not be comfortable with my expression. It's not because I have any intention to devalue your integrity as a man of God. No, but I am pain sharing this truth myself. The truth, people say, is always bitter. Now, the Bible says, as God says, if I be your father, where is my honor? Now, and then he talks to that, and he went to verse 3, chapter 3. And I said, okay, you call yourself a son. But you people, you rob me in tithes and in offerings. Why? Every son is an insurance by the father. Your father has invested in you for such a time like this. Invested. Prayed for you. Laid his hand on you. It's because of you must also minister unto him in the grace or the measure of faith you have received. Ladies and gentlemen, let's read the book of First Chronicles, First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. First Corinthians Chapter 9, verse 11. Now the Bible says, my time is up now. So I'll just wrap up. But I know that that same spirit, the Holy Ghost will minister to you more grace. Second Corinthians chapter 9. If somebody there, you can read it for me. First Corinthians 9, verse 11. What that the scripture says? Verse 11. Okay. If we have sown unto you spiritual things. The father is speaking. The father said, if I have invested in you spiritual blessings. Ah, do you know that there is nothing, there is no possession we have outside what has been ordained to us spiritually? The Bible says that he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. There is no amount of blessing that you have physically that has not been downloaded from the realms of the spirit. So, the father says, if we sown unto you spiritual things, is it wrong for us also to reap from you carnal things or physical things? Bible says the God is the one who raises up the poor and the needy to set him among princes and even the princes of his people to inherit the throne of glory. Now after you have been raised to a level of princeship what do you give unto your father? The Bible says and Abraham gave tithe unto Melchizedek his father, 
Who do you give tithes to? Who do you give anything to? The other day, Jacob called the son, Esau. Son, I love you. I want to bless you. But go into the bush and get me venison, a sovereign one that I may eat and bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the level of our blessing is dependent but our arm giving unto our father. So if these are not working out well for you, check your offering, check your seed, check your tithes to your father. Daddy, I don't want to take too much of your time. I should be wrapping up. The next thing I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers, as a son, what must you do? You must represent the image of your father. The Bible says, Jesus Christ is the invisible image of God. You must represent the image of who is your father. Anybody who looks at you must know who your father is. Anybody. The way you talk, the way you walk, the way you preach, they must know where you are coming from. The other day, the Bible said, after Jesus died and gone, his sons were gathered and casting out demons. These people were unschooled people. But the more they ministered, they did it to understand that the whole world knew that these people were with Bishop Sam Ousu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you don't have even room enough to contain them. But as I want to wrap up, and give the opportunity to the one who deserves it. My father. If I can speak like this, you can imagine my father. Oh. <laughs> Let me give him the honor. What must you do to attract the blessing? You will become a father. Your level of sonship today 